let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome to Satsang. <coughs> Beloved Papaji, how to express the depth of my gratitude for this mind-blowing gift in marrying us? In this wedding, I felt I was marrying you and all of us, including the whole universe, in the form of Shambhu. <laughs> and it is him who I met for the first time remaining as a virgin by touching each moment after each moment and in love, beyond love. Let me, hmm, let my heart be forever at your feet, Shobha. So Shambhu, if you marry Shambhu, of course you are married the whole universe because you are married the time. <laughs> Shambhu is eternal. The name of eternity is Shambhu. He is God of gods. All gods pray before him because <clears throat> creator is Brahma. He creates day and night billions and trillions of species every moment. His work is go on creating the people. And then you need these beings to be preserved. The next road is with God Vishnu, known as preserving the whole universe created by Creator Brahma. And then this is the God of Gods who gives rest to all beings because the beings are not happy whosoever has been created and being looked after by <coughs> preservator God Vishnu but no one is happy. Everybody has troubles so this is <coughs> the role of Shambhu to give them rest and take away the poison from the hearts, from the minds of all beings and drink himself. This is the role of Shambhu, God of Gods. And this adores him. You might have seen the photos of Shambhu. His adoration is snake around his neck. Snake means the poisons of the people and which decorate his body. So if you marry Shambhu, you have married that. Shambhu word means <coughs> benevolence, love and beauty, the most beautiful person in the world because he was enlightened. Even her father was not giving her hand to this man because he was living in the mountains and her father wanted to marry a king with him and the kings came on the elephants and ego. This is Shambhu who knew to ride the ego, otherwise everybody is a bull 
and the ego is riding on them. <laughs> Everybody, you see. Who is egoless? <coughs> who has no ego? He will ride and he will become Shambhu. So for the benefit of all <coughs> universe, once this Shobha in the name of Shakti, beauty, and she for the benefit of the universe for all beings, and she asks a question, has a satsang on the Mount Kailash. She says, how to give freedom to the people of universe and they have not much time. So tell me the quickest way how to be free because people of this universe have no time from their daily routine. So she has asked this question to her husband Shambhu and Shakti. <laughs> for the benefit of the universe, she says, how to be free as quick as possible. And she, he says, my beloved one, come and sit in front of me. And so she did. So she sat in front of Shambhu means self. Now, just Shakti means, Shobha means, the man is beautiful when he is attached with his self, otherwise he is not beautiful. So those seekers after freedom, you can see how beautiful they look. So this beauty is asking the question, how to be free? And he says, look unto my eyes, what do you see? This was the reply of question number one. <laughs> she said, plainly, I see Shambhu seated in front of me. My beloved one, transcend it. Transcend name and form. Shambhu is the name, form is form, a human form, seated in front of her. Transcend it, name and form. This is Reply number two. <laughs> Along with listening, I don't think it is very hard to do it also, do it also along with. If there is any difficulty, ask me, please, what is there to look, face unto your own self, and then she looked, transcended from this thing, and then she said, Shambhu asked, <laughs> where are you? Sit in front of me, look unto my eyes, number one, transcend it, number two, <laughs> then, where are you? No answer. Is there anyone who could give answer after this transcending name and form? And then, when there is no answer, you have merged into Shambhu, into freedom, light, whatever it is. And you are that itself, instantly without any effort and without any thought also. This is all what is called freedom. You are not 
got to do anything and you have not got to stir or activate a mind just for one instant of time, one moment. It can be possible during the whole span of your hundred years life, now, whenever, whenever possible, and you will, for the first time, you will see what is love, what is beauty, and what is peace, what is shanti, and that you are not separate from it. You are that itself, and that is you itself. That's all, my dear Shobha and Shambhu. I bless. This wedding is a blessed wedding. <laughs> so, the last night, on the same day, sixth evening, how people were attracted by you. Shambhu was having a tand of nritya, dancing. Everybody was seeing. What dance was this, you see? And Shobha, of course, was the beauty attracting all those who were present there. <laughs> okay. Papa, what is dreaming? <clears throat> is it the I returning in the sleep state? <coughs> the subtle tendencies are the unfulfilled desires of the waking state. You carry them along with you when you go to sleep. And this is called dreaming state. The most important episode happening of the waking state you carry along with you when you go to sleep. And that is called dreaming state. And it is not different from the waking state. Waking state can be called with the gross objects. And the other is subtle objects, you see. But during that dream, you can't say, this is a dream. You can only say, it's a dream when you wake up. Then you call it, it was a dream. Otherwise, there is no, because when you see a tiger in the dream state, and when this tiger pounces on you, you can't say, you are a dream tiger. You can't say. It is a tiger. And when you see your most beloved person, you love him. And you can't say, it's a dream, no. So when only you wake up, then you reject it, eh? that it was a dream. Even now, everybody is dreaming, even now. Therefore, no one can call it. During the dream state, it looks so real. But when you will wake up to your own self, then only this waking state also will be dejected. And you will really wake up. So you have to sleep when awake and awake when you sleep. And then you transcend these two states. As far as sleep is concerned, first of all, no one sleeps at all. Everybody is dreaming or awake. That is how the researchers have done research now. Keeping a cephalograph on the brain when they are asleep, and it is always making a graph. That means you are not sleeping at all. So they have found out the man only sleeps for six hours during the span of 80 years. 
and what is these six hours? The distance between waking and dreaming. So added up, this moments added up for 80 years becomes six hours and that you miss. <laughs> so this moment is very important. A moment between dream and sleep and between sleep and awake. So this is free of any state. So when I say look at the self, it's just equal to looking at this moment. When you are awake and going to sleep, your time is now to retire to bed. The waking state you are rejecting one by one all gross things, near ones, dear ones, one by one you are rejecting. Now you are rejecting your body also. Body also rejected and occupied senses with their respective activities also are being rejected. I will look after tomorrow. Then mind also. If the mind is working, you can't sleep. You can only dream. So. You reject also, okay, if I have to do this work, postpone it for tomorrow. You reject mind also now. So the world rejected, near ones and dear ones rejected, body rejected, senses rejected, <coughs> mind rejected. After having rejected all these things, still sleep state has not yet come. Waking state is slowly, slowly, leaving. Now, next step, what it is? Before sleeping, after the waking has been left. So this, this is facing, looking unto me. <laughs> and here is the Shambhu, <laughs> inviting you, look unto my eyes and no answer. Therefore I say, anyone who can give answer from this in-betweens. <laughs> and therefore, who is writing this? <laughs> Risa. Who is Risa? Please come here so that you can ask if you do. Hmm. Have you followed? I don't know. <laughs> hmm? I think so, yes. No, you don't know, but then have you followed what I speak that you have followed? Any question? No. No question? Okay. Then returning in the sleep state. So you are asking for dreaming and stay, dreaming and sleeping. Then I told you something else also, that also you have understood? <coughs> what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> You heard it, no? I heard it, yeah. Heard it, okay. Mm. But hearing is not enough. Hearing is not enough. You go to a restaurant and the waiter tells you so many things. You see, of this. so many things he says. Then he gives you a minnow and reading is not enough. And what the waiter says, what is ready this morning on the table is not enough. So. What is enough is eating. Yes. <laughs> so what you have heard, you leave aside. Mino also leave aside. Yeah. So what about this which I spoke? In between sleeping and waking. Hmm. That you did not write here. You missed it. Why did you miss it? <laughs> Don't you pass through this state every day, every moment, even now? Yes. Hmm? Then do it. 
If there is any difficulty, ask me. No difficulty. No difficulty. <laughs> then say, I have done it. I've done it. Done it. <laughs> <laughs> if done it, then show your face to everybody. Come here, sit down and show your face and say, I have done it, so that everybody can smell that face. <laughs> say that. I've done it. Okay. <laughs> I am it. Huh? I am it. Ah, excellent. Now you see how you are speaking now. <laughs> More than me now. <laughs> <laughs> How much time does it take? Not may, much. May I read? <laughs> Other questions may I read? <laughs> what will I do? <laughs> Many other questions? No questions. Okay. <laughs> Finished. What are you looking? What are you looking? <laughs> there are so many people. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Then are they different than no. you? No. No, then, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very then it is said, I said previously, name and form have to be transcended. Then what would you see? First transcend your name and form, and then others, and then what do you see? Come on, eh? Everything and nothing. Ah, huh, yes, then. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you are from? From Boulder. Boulder? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place. You must be very bold then. <laughs> <laughs> Very bold. I am. <laughs> you are there. Sing a song then. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, bold. Come on, stand up. <laughs> Come on, stand up and sing a song. <laughs> yes, yes, you say I've done it then. <laughs> what song? <laughs> whatever you say, whatever comes to sing. From here you have to sing. From here, yes, whatever comes. You say anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But there aren't any songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't touch it, you will, it will come. <laughs> if you don't touch the head, there's a, all what you speak is a song, you know. <laughs> yes. Hmm? Beautiful, eh? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> okay. Again. I don't remember anymore. Okay. No, then you have not to remember. This is all. What is there to remember? <laughs> hmm.
Papaji, how is it that teachers speaking of the same truth who are enlightened can teach different paths or teachings of realizing the truth? Question. How is it that the teachers speaking of the same truth who are enlightened can teach different paths and different teachings realizing this truth. This is not true. There are no different paths. No different paths. And <laughs> the ones you speak about are teaching different paths. They are not teachers. Maybe preachers, you see. <laughs> These are different. A preaching and teaching is a different thing. Because they're different things, different religions, different ways and different teachings. They are called preachers, not teachers, first of all. And then speaking about truth. First of all, the the teacher who teaches the truth, first of all, he has no teaching. And truth cannot be taught. Therefore, there is no way to teach the truth. Therefore, there cannot be any teacher who can teach the truth. And so far, the truth is so untouched, immaculate. None can ever realize it. None has ever realized the truth. It cannot be realized because what, what is the method you are going to realize the truth? What is the equipment? What is the weapon that you are having at hand to realize the truth? What? Maximum ego. Our mind, not with hands. You can't catch the truth with hands. It's subtler than the air. Subtler than the air. You can't hold it. It's not grass, nor subtle. You can't hold it. And the mind cannot grasp it, understand it, realize it, because whatever the mind grasps, it has to be passed. <clears throat> has to be passed. Because mind is past itself. And you take away the past from the mind and show me where is the mind. There is no difference between past and mind, and mind, and time, and time is past. So when you have to see, so this girl, Risa, you see, when she came, the question was, this moment between dreaming and waking, she just laughed, you know, just, and this laugh cannot be caught by mind. <laughs> So this presence cannot be caught, so we don't need any teacher to teach us the truth. Whatever he teaches is of the past. Or whatever he teaches, he can teach, is from the mind. And whatever he can teach from the mind must have been stored in his memory, and memory is past. Where does this teaching come from to teach the truth? Truth is instantly present here and now. The truth word, when I speak truth, already is past. Word truth itself, if we hold the word truth itself, is not that truth, which is, which is ultimate truth. The mind is touching the word truth. Already both have slipped into the memory and become past. After that, what next? <laughs> Therefore, truth can never be taught, can never be grasped or understood. So whatever can be grasped or understood or can be taught must be something gross or subtle, which is not truth. And what you gained by teaching from someone, from teacher, and the teacher gives you, he has gained, 
teaching from someone and he passes on that gain to you, whatever has been gained, this gain was not there before becoming a gain. And what you have gained, you are going to lose it also someday. So what you gain and lose is not truth. Truth is eternal. Before gain, before hearing the word truth, truth had been already there. And truth, when you are going to gain it, you will lose it. So whatever you gain, whatever can be gained or attained or looked or sensed or smelt or felt, rejected. Because this is going to be a new experience. Anything new will become old. Therefore, you aspire something now, aspire something which cannot be seen, <coughs> heard, smelt, touched or felt. So you should always aspire that which you cannot attain. You must love that which you cannot see. This is wisdom. And when you love something and you got it, you are surely going to lose it and both will disappear. The lover and the beloved both will disappear someday. So after disappearance, what remains is truth. Before the creation, <coughs> Before the creation, the creator creates. Where does he get the power of creation from to become a creator, to become a preservator, and to become Shambhu, to give rest? So that peaceful atmosphere, you are always that, you see. Only it is hidden, it is hidden underneath because you have become something. You have become something, I am so and so. Therefore, that beauty is concealed because of egoistic arrogance. So if you don't decide that I am so and so, what do you see underneath, which had been concealed all these ages? So just for a moment, don't give rise to any thought. And you will see this reality, so-called reality, you admit is the reality and so does it become. And this had concealed this reality has concealed your ultimate true nature of peace and love. It can be had when this becoming and this intention of gaining anything, this and that, is wiped out from your mind. So if there's no intention and no thought, then you will see how it will reveal itself here and now to itself, you see. And there should be no experiencer with the intention of any experience. You can't experience. It cannot be experienced. It is beyond experienced and experiencer, in between them. <laughs> Them.
and if the ultimate truth is only love goodness compassion wisdom then shouldn't the teachings reflect this and beings who have realized this truth act through it they do act through they do act through this but they can't speak about this thing all this activity of the teacher comes has to come from the truth as in case of buddha he attained he was a prince but he became buddha means realized person he got it but he could not speak about truth and people were influenced and they were reflected you see and that reflection was not from the person of the body of buddha you see that person that reflection was coming from the realization from the truth itself and the tremendous effect was of that reflection on the hearts of other beings this had been seen you see when kashyap came in front of buddha just came with this intention to be free and he offered a flower to buddha and then took a flower and smiled and he caught the smile something reflected in his heart and it was the first person who caught this reflection and became enlightened so there is a tremendous reflection from the truth not from the teacher or from the body or personality apart from that even the teacher doesn't know what is happening if he knows he is not a teacher no fun <laughs> so this reflection comes from nowhere from nowhere it comes and no one knows he who knows that it is coming from within me and i am passing on this teaching i don't think he is more than a fraud <laughs> yeah but i heard it is <laughs> no one knows ananda asked buddha sir <laughs> what is your experience what did you get sitting under the bodhi tree and he kept quiet he didn't speak because he could not he was honest man he must have tried to speak but he could not speak he could not speak he tried to speak about his realization and he was speaking up to 80 years you see 51 years he spent speaking to find out what it was and you can see from the literature different sutras you see how he states you see how he stating in the diamond sutras and heart sutra vajra chedika sutras and many sutras the best literature in the world is from the buddhist religion you can see naranda and other places you see library is full of literature <laughs> yet why so many books billions of books are available on religion philosophy spirituality and teachings i don't think anyone is has touched the mark so far how can it be touched it is truth no one can touch it you see everything came out of it it cannot be touched so what cannot be touched who can touch it this production of the mind and senses and the body is of later on is later on how can they know what was before the birth what was there before the birth he didn't know who was the father all creation the creator doesn't know who was his creator no <laughs> how can we speak of truth <laughs> so, mm.
dearest Papaji, I am here since two weeks <coughs> and I am most grateful for here in your presence in Lucknow. I enjoy very much being and the days are both peaceful and relaxing. peaceful but where does this but come from peace <laughs> and relaxation hmm? but the nights are almost from the beginning very fearful fearful dreams were happenings then I wake up with fear even though I know it it was only a dream. It takes quite a while to calm down. Normally, I am not a person that does remember his dream often. Can you shed some light on this or help with deep gratitude, Prem Prakash? Who is Prem Prakash? <coughs> Where is Prem Prakash? He's coming here. Hmm. So when you go to sleep, where do you sleep? In your apartment. In bed. <laughs> in your apartment you sleep, in the hotel apartment or in your own home. Yeah. Do you lock it inside the apartment doors? Yes. Have the security locks also? Must be in America there must be security locks also? Just yes, yes. Okay, lock. bolt also, lock also, security lock also. <laughs> chain also. <laughs> so yes, all these things are so scared. So where do you get this fear from? <laughs> fear is outside. Now inside the apartment is, is you sleeping. Maybe one person more along with you. Maybe one person more along with you. So either this fear comes from the other person within, within the doors are from outside is quite secured. No one can come unless you open yourself. So where does this fear come from? It seems to come from inside me. Huh? It seems to come from inside myself, from inside. Uh, okay, inside. Yes. Right, so inside, it comes from inside. But now you are going to sleep. We are going to sleep. Why do you go inside where these fears are there? Why don't you go out of this fear in your apartment? You want to sleep in your apartment now, isn't it? So inside is the fear. Inside the body there is a fear, okay. Now you want to go to sleep. So do you carry body also when you go to sleep? No. No. The fears were in the body, isn't it? In the body, somewhere within, you say inside, maybe in the mind. Okay. Seems to be more so the in mind. the mind, in the mind, even this inside of the mind and inside of the body, you don't carry when you go to sleep. You go alone. And if you take your body along with you, you don't sleep. And if you take fear along with you, you don't sleep. 
you should take mind along with you, you don't sleep. Therefore, you say, I enjoy peaceful and relaxing, but in the night. What do you mean by night? What do you mean by night? What is night? Night is, even sun is not there, you see. By night, I mean the time... In the night you must sleep, no? In the night you must sleep. So what time do you sleep? Eleven? Okay, make it eleven, okay. (laughs) Eleven is a good time to sleep. So at eleven o'clock, why so many people you take along with you to sleep after eleven? Uh, at that time, I'm not aware that I'm taking anybody along with me. You're not sure? At that time, I'm not aware yeah. that I'm taking anything along into my sleep. You are taking fear with you. But I'm not aware of it at that time. Then tell me, I will take you. <coughs> fear and everything is belong to waking state, isn't it? It would belong to so. waking state. Now you are going to sleep. At 11 o'clock is your time to sleep. What do you do with your body and mind and others and relations? What do you do? I slowly kind of detach myself from it. Okay, yes, detachment is a good word. You have to detach yourself, then sleep. Then only you can, now you are detaching one by one. What? What have you detached? Apartment you are detached, you are not carrying, okay? Okay, then your friends, relations, office, business, now come to body. Body also you have to detach because you are going to sleep. And body is mind also and fear is mind also, fear is in the mind. Now the time has come to sleep now, hurry up. Hurry up. <coughs> Next step, you are sleeping. And this, this step, you are outside of sleep, and now you immediately decide, keep this thing away and sleep now. Or you pick up the other step, which is going to sleep backward, and enjoy with your fears. It cannot be others. To some people who cannot sleep, they are always in fear. <coughs> Always in fear. I did, I did not. I did not follow you now. I. Okay. Now you are going to sleep at eleven. Mm-hmm. Eleven. So. Ten hours, fifty-five minutes, fifty-nine minutes, and fifty-nine seconds, belong to you. That is the time, and that's to say next is, so next setting, next second is going to slowly going towards sleep and not returning back. I'm never consciously aware of this moment happening when it Achara, happens. Okay. It is okay, now do it from tonight. From tonight you do it, now this is 10 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds have passed. Now this is the one second is left in your hand. Hmm? Either return back, if you return back, it will not be added into 59 seconds, it's going to be now 11 p.m. Then you decide that I have, I will sleep at 12 o'clock, not 11. Let me play with my fears one hour more. Again, same, same thing again will arise. So tonight, you be aware, slowly when you go to bed, you see how time is passing, how you are go on rejecting things. Last second is very important for you to look at it. Half second is gone, another three quarters have gone, quarter second is left with you. Like this, slowly you will fall asleep, no fear will come. 
Now fear belongs to 59 seconds. 59 seconds, maybe another half second they can also take, I can agree with you. Another one-fourth can take, another one-fourth. Now one-fourth of the second you can well afford for the sleep. Only this much you have to spend for the sleep, one-fourth of a second. After that, no one knows what happens. So slowly take care of this one second and take care of the next one second when you wake up after the sleep. Tomorrow I will ask you this question. How did you spend the one second before sleep and one second after sleep? Mind you, will you remember? I, yes, I will remember. Okay. Okay, if you do it here, you can now sleep. <laughs> or if you don't, wait. Or if you can't, wait for another 12 hours more. Okay, be, remain. <laughs> yeah. If you are aware, you try this thing. If you are aware, look at this time, what I told you just now. I've been speaking, I think, about five minutes. We spoke. In these five minutes, did you have any kind of fear? What? <coughs> for a very short moment, eh? for a very short moment, uh, thought came up that I was afraid that you would ask me to sing a song. Face. Even tomorrow you have to face me the same question. <laughs> One day you have to face me. How long you will run away? You can't run away for a long time. You cannot run away for a long time, otherwise you must have heard he always asks when you touch that second, then Papaji asks you sing a song. <laughs> you must have heard. Yes. Now you have heard? Yes, okay. I've heard. What are you going to do for tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow what will you do? Hmm? You will know, you will sing very well by itself. <laughs> First of all, I don't postpone things. I do not know how I am, how I am very happy with you to give you uh, one day's time. As a matter of fact, I don't use, when I use, I am very careful. How did I use the word tomorrow? My whole body shook. <laughs> my body shook, you see. I found my mistake. <laughs> Why tomorrow? Therefore, I may tell you, don't postpone. Make the best of it. Tomorrow we will see. <laughs> no one knows what is going to happen next moment, you see. What is happening? No one knows. Unaware, unaware, somebody will come and take away the bird from your cage. <laughs> Slowly this bird will, this sparrow will fly away. <laughs> and this sparrow cannot be kept in cage for long. This is not her place. Somehow she agreed to live in yourself and you have put her into great trouble and she is not happy with you. Sparrow means soul. And this bird is not happy with you because you are troubling her. <laughs> now please have some pity on her. Pity. Compassion on her. Let her be free. Thirty-five million years she has lived with you, isn't it? What a compassion this she has with you. <laughs> now let her enjoy. Let her fly in this air. <laughs> Don't bring her back into this cage. Don't bring her back. <laughs> oh, you are in a singing mood now. <laughs> Yes, yes. 
I guess. Yeah. What is that? You come here, I tell you. You, you sit, you stand here, you stand, and you, now you lift your hand and sing. Yeah, that's it. You come. Yes. Dear Papaji, two and a half years ago, I was very sick and two doctors said, maybe I will die soon. In this time, there was a moment I really, really accept to die. And then a flower opened Well, life. There was who's Bridget? Bridget, come here. Sick. Did you go to any psychiatric 
psychiatrist. No? Yeah, they tell you everybody's sick. <laughs> yeah. Psychiatrists have to visit, they say. Uh, one psychiatric was visiting one friend, one girl who had a friend was also sitting, and she was checking for one hour, hundred dollars, now he's going, and asked, they were friends of the college itself, and then she asked her friend, you also get a checkup. And she said, but I am not in trouble, I have no disease. But how do you know you have no disease unless you show up to the psychiatric? He will tell you so many diseases. <laughs> you must have heard in the papers there was a strike in, in England. Doctors stuck work f for higher wages. And doctors were not attending. And during that, one month, no one died. <laughs> so I slept. Ideally, accept to die. And then a flower opened. There was freedom and thankfulness for every normal being. Here, being with myself, after some time, the flower of dying comes again in my dream. Hmm? The fear. F what? The fear, fear of dying. Yeah. Mm. Fear of dying comes up in my dream. Mm. Resisting the fear was res <coughs> rising. Uh, resisting. Resisting. Life again. Life again. Very often I feel this strong identification with my body and this body, must this body die to be there, be free and peaceful? Will it be free and peaceful after death? Huh? Please speak about death and how to <coughs> heal the fever, fear of Dying. Dying. Okay, thank you for this. If there's a new name, you please give me, I would be very happy. You are from Germany? Austria. Austria. Vienna. Oh. Vienna, that's mm. same thing, German. German English, the first. <laughs> So this fear of death, I think, they must have brought. It's, it was not correct that you got this fear. It was just a fear. But how it come? It must have brought from childhood mostly. The fears come from childhood. Responsibility is on the mother. If you have been brought up by the mother, I do not know. Were you brought up by the mother or some other stepmother? No. By the mother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then the mother must give love, say, generally, if you are not in the <coughs> hands of... Sir? If you are not in the hands of your mother, then the fears, generally I see the fears come. But the mother cannot give mostly unless this mother is involved with some other relationship, then the fear comes with the, from the child, or so the child doesn't know. Because the mother sometimes she's occupied with a new relationship <coughs> that I do not know, I need not ask you also. <coughs> so then this child doesn't know. Sometimes she's my mother, loves me, and sometimes when she is hurried, hurriedly leaving me and closing me into the apartment and leaves me alone 
and then she's very angry because her friend is waiting outside and she's in hurry and go and still the child is crying to go with the mother and she slaps now the child doesn't know doesn't know are there two mothers one is beautiful loving mother other is very angry enemy child small child innocent mind cannot make up so this fear rises with the age i've seen many cases you see the children the fear is still there and they are now mothers the fear is still there you see so when i tell them there are some people here also now and i tell them they are living in fear at a very young age but so it is our responsibility of every one of you including myself to help those how one can suffer for nothing if someone is have physical ailments physical diseases so we can see that the doctors are here doctors can help for the physical ailments and for the mental ailments mostly we have to help we are responsible all of us are responsible to see how to get rid of the fear of our own people who are here we have a family we have a feeling with everyone so we have to help see whosoever so that this man doesn't slide into the into the lake of fear again you see so whenever somebody comes into you speaks just keep him up alive speak of satsang questions about the satsang so that this person hasn't got time to slip into the memory after all fear is in the memory you see not in the present state you see but fear even in satsang the people cannot stay in the present state sliding down into the past you see. so this fear is more mostly projected and when you have fear you are in the memory of the past not in the present so, so past cannot help you know what is done is 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 already done you see there was one girl here she left and she said my mother has she came to know later on has thrown her on the footpath and there is some child care government department they picked up the child and then they give to child who want to adopt children and they she was brought up by parents and this girl is now about 13 year old and she asked the parents how come that i am quite different i am blonde my skin is very white and they were mexican so they were having a, a dark complexion then they said my dear daughter they had only one child they didn't have the child we have got you from the government and the story your history is this you see your mother left in a plastic bag outside on the fourth path and you were collected and taken care of the child center and we adopted you so listening to this she ran away from the house ran away from the house and went to bangkok bangkok she heard of bodh gaya came to bodh gaya and then she met me in rishikesh also and she didn't tell me this story but there was another french woman and she had less money also and this french lady stayed in imperial hotel while going going to hong kong she told the story and then i came to know about the story that's why she was suffering and this fear cannot be got rid of but then second time she again came knowing it not expressing always seeing that she is not engaged all the time giving giving her much love having swimming in the ganga and speaking about this thing and slowly she became very good person now i said the parents now gone whatever it is 
you should not be lost. You make the best of your life. You see. If your mother has done something wrong, she will suffer for it. And you wake up so that wherever she is, you may not know. Wherever she is, let her be blessed. You see. So there was freedom and thankfulness for every normal beings, being with myself. So this is this what you this what you state is artificial. You see, it's not coming from the heart. What you speak is not coming from the heart. What is concealed underneath will not uh, work out like this thing. You have to go deep there from where the fear arises from, you see. And it will burn itself, you see. All fears will burn. You go with the candle, you see. <laughs> you go with the candle of light, and all fears will leave you, you see. After some time, the fear of dying comes up again. Now, let it come again, you see. Now you know. Before you did not know what the trouble was, and now you know the fear is coming up. At least you are aware now. When you are aware of a thief, he is entering, and he is going to rob you thing of something, and when you are awake, seeing awake, he will not enter the house. Now you are aware the fear is coming up. Fear is coming up. Now give it a trial. Give it a trial now itself, let the fear rise, and then tell me what happens to this fear. No, give a rise to the fear, voluntarily rise, let the fear come, and I will tell you how to deal with it. You be prepared. Don't run away from the fear. Face it. <coughs> Do you follow what I speak? Mm -hmm. Yes, you go look out all the corners of your house, all the corners where this thief is hiding. You look yourself, and when you are so intelligent, vigilant, nobody will enter the house. Everything will leave. You be vigilant everywhere. You pounce on the fear itself. That's what I mean. <laughs> look into everywhere. Go into into the corner, into the hideout of the fears. <laughs> Before you sleep, then you will kill all fears and then go to sleep. You see. Because you are not aware, therefore fears have to come, you see. Hmm. Very often I flee, feel this very strong identification <coughs> with my body. Must this body die <coughs> to be peaceful? No. Peace will not come after the death of body. It will start from the beginning from where it has left, maybe in more miserable circumstances. So do it now. Remove this now, because the death doesn't give peace. It is running from these circumstances. The same circumstances are following you behind. Mm. So if you die also, they will stay. They will stay. Your body is finished. So these circumstances are waiting for the next time to come with you. So your soul will fly away. Body will be burnt or buried, reduced to earth. But what about this thing? Your fear in the soul that death has come. But this, this essence of the body 
there's fear in it, and these circumstances are following, they will manage now the soul. Again, they will attack and enter into the soul, and again they will find very favorable womb to again start the life. Like this will go on going endlessly, you see. So if you decide to get rid of this, this is the time, don't postpone. Be aware, be vigilant, and then there will be fire. This vigilance is fire. Fire, that conflagration can burn the whole forest with one single mastic, you know. That. Small mastic you strike and throw into the forest. The whole forest is burnt, isn't it? Like this vigilance, look into it, you see. The whole, whole thing what the fears, whole thing, everything will, and will finish and you will have peace, peaceful life. And let the body be here or not here. And you will not be afraid of death also. After all, what is death? What is death of God? It's only name given opposite to the birth. So this, this state will tell you that you have never been born, never been born and never will die. This is the result of ultimate happiness, you see. So you will live always and die before death. Die without dying. And this is the death to get rid of the ego is dying before death. Otherwise, the ego is living and you are dying every moment. So kill this, kill this fear and nobody can touch you. No death will come near you because death will come to ego only, you see. And body is ego. When death comes, it will see emptiness inside. So what she can take? <laughs> what she can take? She will take the ego only. Death of the ego, that's all. Again to be reborn. So you have to be very vigilant each moment, you see, to be free of all fears. And result, what will happen, I do not know. That you have to tell me when you are prepared to. <laughs> Then you ask for it. Thank you. If there is a new name, of course, when the fears are gone, this name itself, when you say Bridget, now Bridget known is, and everybody attributes fear to this name itself. It's better to change the name. <laughs> it's the name of the fear. <laughs> okay. So I give you that name where fears will not touch you, you see. Means fire. If the fear enters into this name, it will burn, you know? What is that name I have got into mind just now? Mm -hmm. You must have heard if you, you are from Germany, there are no volcanoes in Germany. Is there any volcanoes? You are from? Austria. Austria, no, no volcano. <laughs> they are buried in snow only. They are buried in snow only, yes. <laughs> but you must have seen the volcanoes, no? People who belong to Hawaii, they must know. Goddess Pele, they must know. Okay? So I give you name Pele. Okay? Oh. What a name. <laughs> 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 you know how to spell? <laughs> and anybody who will tell you what's your name, you say Pele. <laughs> and, and then they will know she's Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to spell it. Anybody from Hawaii can tell you. <laughs> she's from Hawaii, she will tell you. <laughs>
In three days, I am going to on a pilgrimage to Arunachala. Could you please tell me the correct way to make a pilgrimage? Is there a way to prepare? Yes, there is a preparation for pilgrimage. First of all, who is Sri Devi? Sri Devi from where? Uh, from uh, When do you want to go? Excuse me. To pilgrimage. First of all, do you know the route, how to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To Madras and Madras, yes, that I wish can be given to you. Many people have gone there and they can help you how to prepare when someone goes to pilgrimage. <coughs> so he has to leave behind his house. House you can't carry with you, no? You can't carry the house, isn't it? You can't carry all of your friends, relations, you can't carry. Hmm. So with the sole aim, if you can't carry this thing, now you leave behind, now you are leaving them for a higher purpose of pilgrimage. You are going to some place for freedom only, isn't it? Pilgrimage is for freedom. You are performing this pilgrimage and your name is now Pilgrim. Pilgrim. <coughs> Not a citizen, Pilgrim, on the path. So on the way, people can only ask you where you are from and where are you going. That's all the relationship on the way, you see. <laughs> where from and where to. So when they will see you are going on a pilgrimage, so you have to leave your attachments behind. Now your mind is focused on what you are going to get out of this shrine of pilgrimages. So in this particular case, you are going to Arunachala. (coughs) And Achala means that which does not move. So you are going to perform that pilgrimage which is immobile, does not move, is not mobile. Mobility, no mobility, is not moving. A month ago you asked me to look for Hmm? that. A month ago you asked me to look for myself for that which had not moved. A month ago you asked her to look at that which doesn't go. Yeah, that's why yeah, that's, that's I'm coming here. That is called Aruna Chala. And Aruna means light. <coughs> light. <coughs> that divine light which does not fade. Ever shining. <coughs> so this is called Aruna Chala. So Aruna Chala is within your heart also. But then what is inside is without also. This is your own projection of within. And then you cannot see within, you have projected everything outside. So what you think, it does happen. You can't see within, therefore you have projected whole universe outside. So now you have projected this Arunachala, no difference between inside and outside. But outside you can see, touch, and taste, and hear. Therefore that Arunachala you can see, because inside Arunachala, that, that one who is true reality you can't see. Therefore you go out for help. <coughs> And that Arunachala will tell you, you go and see, go around and see, it will tell you, look within. 
and then you will merge into that Arunachala. This is how to prepare for the pilgrimage and you have got to be very pure in mind. You have not to carry any thought with you. Only one Arunachala. As somebody goes for wedding, wedding is the day and wedding is now the time. <coughs> So he leaves his house to win his bride. He's on the way. And then many friends who do not know that he is going to be wed tonight, <coughs> and they play tennis. They invite, we are having a good game, you come. You come to tennis court. He rejects, no? <coughs> he rejects, no. Because this is more important. So what's more important must be kept in mind. <coughs> that is the preparation. Inside and outside. No other thoughts would come. This is a good preparation. <coughs> That's all. Dear Papa, I feel very weak, exhausted. The last few years before I used to do lot of sports, had lot of energy. I was professional skier. Then seven years ago, everything changed. I turned into more silence, slow life. All emotions came, expressions of anger, sadness, etc. I started to do more exercise, overdid it, and ran away from my inner fear, collapsed. These last two years, I have had to stop because I simply have to no energy. This is very painful to let go. I am very sen sensitive to noise. Too many people, pain in my body, still very emotional. I am very weak. I feel like a victim to my feelings. Please help me to transcend this weakness into strength turn. I know there is nowhere to go, nowhere to look for. Still, I expose myself to this long trip from Sweden to India to see you, a chance to get healed. Mm. A ridiculous hope. I am worse here then there. I am, I am naive and the whole thing seems stupid. There are no miracles. Very few people are ready for enlightenment to be it totally. The rest of us have to go step by step, slowly karmic 
karmic i would stay here one week or six months what difference is gone later anywhere again all questions are mind i know the beyond i have had it no name anonymous so my dear young boy don't talk philosophy <laughs> you take care of your health because you don't find fault with others because first you improve your health this freedom is only for the fittest person fittest person in prime youth very fit in body very fit in in mind very strong mind and very strong muscles <laughs> then only you can perhaps then this rise for the desire of freedom will rise itself first you improve your health wherever here sweden switzerland the best because whatever it is you must take good care of your health and then this desire once in a way to a very rare one will arise <coughs> therefore our records show so this universe has no capability no capacity to produce many people who get free in a thousand years so when we speak of a enlightened person why should we go back and dig into the prehistoric period why i should go to deal with buddha why because it is so rare to find a man and look this man prince surrounded by luxurious life <coughs> born with golden spoon in his mouth son of a king mother maya devi <laughs> and prediction that this boy on the birth was predicted he will become buddha mind you arrest him <laughs> <laughs> imprison him into the luxurious life so that he doesn't see outside nobody old nobody diseased no one sick so a special palace was built and high wall was <laughs> was built and this young prince was surrounded by by beauties teen ager beauties also married to the beauty of the land yashodara also got one child also see this was the situation <clears throat> and one night he is sleeping with his wife one said yashodra suckling the bust of his mother how come this man what is this situation sleeping with wife prince all luxurious life had not seen <laughs> the desire come what is outside this palace so asked his heart trainer achana was the name even his name is remembered you know a man who was taking care of his horse achana was the name so if you touch live even near the person that man is also surviving living forever kantik was the name of the horse even horse is still alive in the in the bus of all those who walk, who are seekers after truth he asked what is outside this wall i have never seen but then no one could orders of the king were he is not allowed the gates were locked he said but i want to 
see what is outside the wall. Is it all the universe, which is where I am living? Then the servant said, no, my lord, there is outside also, but we have orders of the king not to take you around. No, no, go, I must now. Go, I must. So it was dark, night. So the horse is ready. Two horses, one for him, one for him, you see. Then he goes out. <coughs> and it is said, the, with this rise of the desire of freedom, the earth became so soft, even the hoofs, the footsteps of the horse did not make, make nice, so that the gatekeepers did not notice this man is going out, you see. <laughs> and locks were unlocked themselves. This is the beauty of the desire of freedom. Everything is unlocked, goes. <laughs> First person he saw was a man coughing, coughing miserably. Why this man is, is making this kind of noise? Because he never saw a sick man. All people were under 17, prime health. No one was sick. Why this man is making this kind of sound and is in pain? He is sick man, my lord. Sick, yes, my lord, sick. Will you also fall sick? Yes, my lord. Me also and you also. Listen the, listen the three steps. You see a man, a ready man who is very strong in mind and strong in health and all luxurious life. It is for him to be free because so far we're here, all those people who have realized have been kings, what to do? Janaka was a king, Dasrata was a king, Buddha was a king, Yagna was, Valka was a king, Bharata was a king, all those kings we listen, you see. No beggar can get rid of his begging bowl and ask for freedom. So man must be fit, very fit on all sides, you see. Next man, next man he saw hunchbacked. He cannot walk straight. Why this man cannot walk straight? Because of the weight of old age. He's old and in old age people walk hunchbacked. Will you be like this? Yes, my lord, me too and you too. One day when you will become old age, he's old. Then he saw one man being carried away and some people, women, men crying behind this. What this man is lying on the stretcher and four people carrying him and some people crying behind, weeping, wailing, he's dead. What is death? Death means something from inside the body, soul, is no more in the body, therefore it cannot walk, it cannot talk, it cannot work. Therefore the people, he may be a husband or a son or a father or a lover or a beloved, immediately he is sent out of the house and cremated or buried, so he is one. Will you die also like this? Yes, my lord, I will, and you also will. Mm. Ride me back. Ride me back to the palace. Came. <laughs> Seeing this poor woman who is going to leave her husband in just one hour, midnight, and this boy is going to be orphaned, who is suckling one step outside the threshold, one inside. <laughs> this is the situation, attachment and detachment, you see. Looks behind, you show there is sleeping, beautifully sleeping, beautiful woman and innocent son Rahul suckling the mother looked, 
didn't think. Off he goes, off he went. That's all. That's all the story. So all have, have to do one day, otherwise it's not going to happen. You have got to be prince. Uh, wake up midnight from the surroundings of all attachments. And then you are seated under the Bodhi tree. What is Bodhi tree? Desire of freedom. So wherever you are, it's a Bodhi tree. Maybe I was not there. And this young prince didn't have a teacher. He had to tile hard. <laughs> we can't do it, no? We can't do it, and I don't advise you to do also. Because what he could not describe, later on sitting under the Bodhi tree, he went around again and again under that Bodhi tree, around seven times, you see, and bowed down, you see, to that Bodhi tree, gratefulness. So wherever you are, because he did not see a master, he did see a teacher, a realized person, within the temple, within the palace. So. I don't advise you to run away from life. You stay wherever you are, even on the bed. One side wife, other side son, let them sleep. You wake up, you see, and sit under the Bodhi tree, and you will be freed instantly. After all, when Buddha went and he was seven years going to this ashram and that center, where many things were being done, penances, very strong penances were being done. One after the other, he went on rejecting, no, this is not the way for freedom, I will do myself. So finally, he sat down under a tree. When he sat down under a tree, he has rejected all the methods, all the teachers and all ways. And when he has found freedom, it must have happened in just one moment which I speak about. So why not? You must be apprised of the fact there's no difference between that moment in which this prince became Buddha and the same moment is available to you. And if you sit under this Bodhi tree of this moment, you are also Buddha without disturbing your life. And one moment only you have to sit. And first sit, and then get up, go around seven times, and then come to me and give me the result. I am here. So my dear young man, improve your health. Improve your health. It is most important because if the health is not, let me continue, please. I have got two more letters. I give time later on. So first improve your health. You have no right to even use the word and speak about others. They are wasting their time and speak philosophy of mind and ego, you have no right to do it. And when this right thing will come, first improve your health. Now you want to run away, you may run away anywhere you like. I did not send you a fax come here to Lucknow. I don't call anyone. You have come on your own accord. I welcome you. I love you. Why you have come, I do not know. You do not know. <laughs> you are here. I am here. We are here. I do not know, and you do not know. I think, I advise, 
let us not know. <laughs> let us <laughs> let us keep quiet. <laughs> why to bother ourselves? Why we are here? Why we are here? Why I am here? Do, better don't ask this thing. <laughs> Some force has sent you from here. You have been forced to come here. Why should you leave your house? Why you should leave the comforts of your house? When you travel, you have to face the discomforts also. Why you have been forced to come here, first of all, if I ask you a question. There is some force who pushed you here, and that force is here. And that force is forcing me. That force is forcing me. And that force is forcing you to hear it. So that force is not known to me and not known to you. Force is a force. <laughs> and let us keep quiet. Let us keep quiet. And we will see the person who came here, the person who sat, the person who spoke, is the same force. Is the same force. Once we, we know it, then you will know neither you have come nor you will return. And this is the miracle of this force. And if anyone has solved this miracle, please tell me because <laughs> I am old man. I, I want to kiss this force. I cannot. She hides. <laughs> She hides. If I am outside, she goes inside the chamber. If I look inside, she is without. <laughs> if I am here, she is there. If I am there, she is here. Anybody can help. I am old. You are quite young man. You tell me. You tell me how to love her. You are young man. You are experienced also more than me. How to love the love. You have more experience because I read every day letters better than me. Namaskar, Papa Ji. Freya, Freya, what is this name? Freya? Freya. Huh? Freya. Freya? <coughs> Come here. What is this name? Freya? Hmm? What is the meaning of Freya? Mm, it's, a, um, it's a name from the northern. From mountain. Not from the mountain, from northern part of Europe, and yeah, it's my original name, but it's a, it's a god name. I don't know why. <laughs> I like. Namaskar, Papaji. You say you have no question, no question. Yeah. No question. <laughs> then you wrote a letter also. This thing, what was this thing? And this question, you say, is it not a question? I like to look in your eyes. Is it not a question? <laughs> question can be asked anyway because some people <coughs> ask questions by hands, isn't it? 
some people can ask questions by hand, isn't it? You answer by hand also, by show also this thing and so many things, all direction. Question, a man who is dumb, he solves his problems without speaking, isn't it? <laughs> and those who are blind also can sign something. And then, this is a question I want to see, look into your eyes also is a question because the people who are experts, they speak to eyes also. I have some references of some people who speak to eyes. Through eyes, you can speak through the eyes and that few people know this art. Few people know this art. One boy I knew, he knew this art, and I, I know this boy. Yeah, you, why you are looking, I will tell you the way, I will not tell you the way. <laughs> yeah. So, he is in love with one girl, very beautiful girl, and this girl is with her sisters, her friends, her mother, or somebody else. And this man cannot show up because other people will not like, and this girl also will not like that anybody knows. This love is a very secret affair, everybody knows it. And when it is open, you have to face. <laughs> you have to face it. <laughs> so this boy speaks with the eyes, Slightly, slighting eyes, so <coughs> slightly slighting, winking, okay, off he goes, and with some context, with con some context she follows, I have got to go to meet my friend, that's all. This is also speaking, isn't it? Do you know that art? No. No, okay. <laughs> Then why you ask this thing? <laughs> Maybe to get to know it. Hmm? Maybe to get to know it. What is it? Maybe to get to know it. Ah, Mira, who's Mira? Come here, Mira. Mira. Hmm? When did you come? Um, about three or four days ago. Four days ago. In the stillness, the unknown leaves into me. There with you in the infinite deepening of love and gratefulness I sit, without any doubt, without any question. I am pulled by its resistible limitlessness, this impersonal, most intimate meeting that never begins and never ends. For everything, everywhere I am, are the feet of my Master, for me to bow down into, and I disappear. The birds sing out in such sweetness, and the flowers call me into their very essence, which is but the nectar of my own true self. O oh, Papa, with your grace, everywhere, wherever I am, wherever, where am I not, I bow down to thee, your beloved. <coughs> 